Hello. In this video, I will show you how to configure mobile VPN with IKE2 and SSL on a locally managed Firebox using the Fireware Policy Manager. Mobile VPN with IKE2 and SSL can also be configured using the Fireware Web UI, and for cloud managed devices, please use the device configuration in WatchGuard Cloud. Let me quickly cover some main differences between IKE2 and SSL VPN. The IKE2 mobile VPN is recommended as it provides the best throughput and security, and on top of that it is fairly easy to deploy because you will be provided with the scripts and configuration files necessary to get the built-in clients working, for which you do not need software on any platform except Android, where you would use the StrongSwan client. Furthermore, the IKE2 VPN can be easily deployed to many clients at once, using deployment tools like Active Directory Group Policy. IKE2 also allows pre-logon VPN connections, which means that the client machine builds the VPN when setting up the logon screen, and the computer can then use domain resources. Moving to SSL VPN, which actually uses TLS for encryption, you have the option, when necessary, to customize the ports for authentication and communication over the tunnel. This option will allow you to authenticate to all authentication servers directly, especially Active Directory, while IKE2 requires to use the Active Directory Network Policy Server role, short NPS, to act as a radio server to facilitate the Active Directory communication. The clients need the WatchGuard branded OpenVPN software to be installed, which is only available for Windows and Mac. With this client, for example changes to network routes, the SSL VPN configuration on the clients would be updated automatically on their next connections. While using the generic OpenVPN software, you would need to import the new profile to update the routing information on those clients. This also applies to IKE2, needing to redeploy the new configuration file. Let us get started. In Policy Manager, go to VPN, then Mobile VPN, and get started. From all the available mobile VPNs, I want to launch the wizard for the IKE2 setup. To continue, I click Next. Here I need to specify the Firebox's domain names or IP addresses for the clients to connect to. In my example, I will add the Firebox's one and only available external interface IP address and click Next. Here I can choose the authentication service that I want to use with IKE2, like WatchGuard AuthPoint for multi-factor authentication and other third-party authentication servers. Using Active Directory authentication, for example, requires a radius server, such like the Active Directory Network Policy Server, short NPS. Since I do not have this set up yet, I select Firebox DB as default and click Next. Here I can decide which users and groups I want to allow to connect over this VPN connection, for which in this example I select the already created user 1 and click Next. As with all VPNs, I must define a virtual IP address pool. This IP address pool should not be overlapping with any existing networks, especially other VPN virtual pools or even branch office VPN networks. Since I know this default virtual IP address pool is not currently overlapping with any of my networks, I will click Next. Now that the wizard is complete, it gives me some instructions on how to download the client profile, which includes scripts and configuration files to deploy to the clients in order to set up the VPN connection, and that I need to save the configuration to the Firebox before being able to download the client profile. Before I click Finish, I enable the checkbox to open the mobile IKE2 configuration dialog, which will show us all IKE2 settings. You will surely recognize several settings, like the Firebox address and virtual IP address pool, which I have configured in the wizard, yet also the option to change the method of networking. The per default enabled option to force all client traffic through the tunnel sends all traffic from VPN clients through the VPN tunnel, so traffic destined for the internet and your local network. This option is more secure as all the client traffic can be controlled through the according configured policies. You can also specify allowed resources, so only route these through the tunnel. Also, it is possible to change the DNS settings, so perhaps assign the settings of a domain name and DNS service to the mobile clients if necessary. In the Authentication tab, we again have the settings for authentication servers and users and groups, which I have accordingly configured in the wizard. In the Security tab, there are details to the Firebox's generated IKE2 certificate, along with the default IKE2 Phase 1 transforms and IPsec proposals for Phase 2. 
The default settings currently work with all modern clients, so rarely needs to be changed, but if you do so, just make sure you test each client you plan to use with this VPN. With a click on OK, you can see that the configuration has a new policy called Allow IkeV2 Users. This policy allows the IkeV2 users, so all users assigned to this group, to access all networks on all ports and protocols, so it is very wide open. In my example, I want the IkeV2 users to use the same HTTP and HTTPS proxy rule like the local users, which means that they are protected with the same security services and are allowed to visit the same type of websites as everyone on the local network. In addition, I add the group to the rules DNS and ping as considering disabling the default created policy, but remember to create the according policies for them to access the allowed resources. This in specific is more covered in the tutorial video on secure mobile VPN access. At this point, it is time to save the configuration to the Firebox. And now it is time to go back to the mobile VPN configuration window. Here we can see the green check mark next to IkeV2 and the button has changed from Launch Wizard to Configure, which is again the IkeV2 dialog that we've just looked at. With a click on the Client Profile button, I can change the VPN connection name to something more meaningful, as this name will later appear in the VPN connection of the client machine. A click on Download prompts me where to save this profile as archive file. I confirm the location with a click on Save and enter my admin credentials to finalize the creation of this file, and can now be used to deploy on the client machines. I am now on one of those client machines for which I already grabbed the archive file and extracted its content already. Along with the helpful readme file, you simply need to pick the correct folder for the operating system you're working with, which in my case I will choose the Windows folder. This readme file provides the specific instructions for the chosen operating system, yet we can just let all install automatically. Yes, just with a click on the Windows batch file here. Click yes on the UAC prompt and it will finish up with the install and press any key to close the window. Down on the Windows task tray, I can click on the networking icon and can see the installed IkeV2 VPN, which I select and click connect. I then enter the username and password and click OK. If all is correct, we are already connected. A ping test to the internal Firebox's interface IP address confirms this too. On the front panel of the Firebox System Manager, we can see the user is logged in and traffic is passed through the tunnel and find details such like the virtual IP address, username and policies being used in the traffic monitor logs. There might be the situation in which mobile VPN with IkeV2 may not work for your remote workers, such like when being in networks where the gateway is not allowing IPsec traffic. For this, you can also set up mobile VPN with SSL. Yes. It does also work on its own, of course. Let me show you how. In Policy Manager, go to VPN, then Mobile VPN and get started. From the available mobile VPNs, I want this time to launch the wizard for the SSL setup. I click Next on the welcome message and will select my Firebox's external interface IP address as primary and click again Next. Here I can choose the authentication servers that I want to use with SSL, like WatchGuard AuthPoint for multi-factor authentication and other third-party authentication servers. Since I still have not set it up yet, I keep the already selected Firebox DB as default and click Next. As like before with IkeV2, I can decide which users and groups I want to allow to connect over this VPN connection, for which in this example, I select the already created user 1 and click Next. Here we have the virtual IP address pool. Just like with IkeV2, we need to make sure that this doesn't overlap any other networks I am using. Since I know this network is good, I click Next. The setup is completed and lets us know that we need to save the configuration to the Firebox before the SSL VPN is available. Yet before, I want to look at the SSL VPN configuration settings, so I check the checkbox and click Finish. We can see the through the wizard configured Firebox's IP address and the virtual IP address pool and the default settings for the network part, set to routed VPN traffic and to force all client traffic through the tunnel. It is possible to use the option to bridge VPN traffic, yet I would recommend, like in nearly all so far seen setups, to stay with this default. You can of course use the option to only allow access to all of the Firebox's configured trusted, optional and custom networks or specify allowed resources. Same as with the IkeV2, I stick to the default, so to route all traffic through the tunnel and control traffic with according policies later. 
In the authentication tab, we can see the configured authentication server settings along with users and groups, but also some options on how the actual SSL VPN software client should behave. I would recommend leaving these settings unless you're sure needing to change this for your setup. In the advanced tab, there are details to the DNS settings. So perhaps assign the DNS of a domain name and DNS service to the mobile clients if necessary and settings to the configuration and data channel. With a click on OK, you can see that the configuration has two new policies. WatchGuard SSL VPN to allow the clients to establish the VPN to the Firebox and allow SSL VPN users to allow the users to access the resources, which for this rule is again wide open. Same as with Ike v2, I want to restrict access to specific policies instead. Again, covered more in depth in the tutorial video on secure mobile VPN access. At this point, it is time to save the configuration to the Firebox and head over to a client machine. Now I am on the client machine and have already installed the VPN software, which you can either get from our software downloads page on the website or by going to the Firebox itself and downloading the client from there. A double click on the SSL VPN icon down in the Windows task tray opens the SSL VPN client. For server, I need to enter the configured IP address of the Firebox. Next, the username and the user's password. Since the configuration has not been downloaded, it is normal to see the option to remember the password. Yet in our case, you remember, I did not activate the checkbox. So upon the next connection, this checkbox will not be shown anymore. I click on connect and the client connects to the Firebox. The certificate warning will show on the connect as this is the default Firebox web server certificate. If you do not want to see this warning, you can use a publicly assigned web server certificate instead. More details are available in the help center. Search for configure the web server certificate for Firebox authentication. In this example, I accept this and click on yes and will download the SSL VPN configuration and shortly after I am connected. A ping test to the internal Firebox's interface IP address confirms this too. On the front panel of the Firebox system manager, we can see the user is logged in and traffic is passed through the tunnel and find details such like the virtual IP address, username and policies being used in the traffic monitor logs. Here are some key takeaways. Mobile VPN with ArcV2 provides the highest performance and security and the default ciphers cover all modern clients, yet check these perhaps before you start the mass deployment. Remember to update the client configuration whenever you perform changes to the IKE v2 configuration. Using Active Directory authentication, for example, requires a radius server, such like the Active Directory Network Policy Server, short NPS. Also for IKE v2, I recommend using multi-factor authentication, such as AuthPoint MFA to increase security. For mobile VPN with SSL, the client will download any changes that have been done the next time it connects. All authentication server options are available, yet remember to select the most used option as your default. I recommend to use multi-factor authentication, such as AuthPoint MFA to increase security. If for some reason remote locations restrict TCP port 443, go back to the settings and use the UDP protocol on common ports, such as port 53. You can find more details on this in the tutorial video on Optimize Mobile VPN with SSL throughput. You can find more details of course in the WatchGuard Help Center, but maybe you're also interested to have a look at the courseware, available in the WatchGuard Learning Center.